All right, Math 1010, Module 5, Lesson 5.4. First objective, solve rational equations, including using function notation. Okay, so this first one, it's rational because we have a divide by x. To clear fractions, we multiply by the common denominator. Multiplying the left side by x, we can then distribute that times x to each term and multiply the right side by x to keep the equation in balance, and we can reduce. Okay, so that leaves us x squared plus just 24 equals negative 11x. This looks like a quadratic equation. I'm going to move the 11x to the left, so it's x squared plus 11x plus 24 equals 0. We can factor this. And that is x and x and 8 plus 8 and plus 3. So x equals negative 8 and negative 3. You can check these. For example, negative 8. If we plug it in, that would be negative 8 plus 24 over negative 8 should equal negative 11. And this is negative 3. And so we can see that it checks. And the other one checks equivalently. Okay, next question. Now this one, I see some students just do the cross multiply. Cross multiply is a shortcut of multiplying both sides by the lowest common denominator. And it's a shortcut meaning that you do shortcut some steps and Shortcuts aren't always very good. You wouldn't want to try to cross multiply on example 3 because there's these two fractions on the left. So you have to know the single fraction on the left, single fraction on the right, then you could. However, I'm not going to emphasize that at all. Instead, I'm going to emphasize the actual step, which is multiply by the LCD on the left and the right. The LCD is x plus 5 and x minus 2. There we go. So the x minus 2 reduces on the right side, and the x plus 5 reduces on the left side. And now we'd have to distribute the minus 4. So minus 4x plus 8. And here, distribute the 2. That is 2x plus 10. Okay, let's move the x's to the left and the numbers to the right, giving us negative 6x equals 2. Divide by negative 6, and we have our answer x equals negative 2 6 which reduces to negative 1 third okay if you wanted to check this you could use your fraction button or you could use decimals if you go to decimals this is negative 0 0.3333 three, 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 three. eventually you'll get tired of typing that in and you will round as soon as you round know that the left side will no longer equal the right side but it'll be so close in decimal value that you know you have the approximate solution because you checked the approximate solution. And so therefore you can still essentially verify this answer if you go to decimals. If you just do negative 0.3, these won't be too close left and right side. The more this goes, the more threes you include, the closer the equals will work. But if you use your fractions, it will be exactly equal because one third is the exact answer. All right, great. Example three, clearing fractions. So factoring the denominator, greatest common factor, can help us see that the common denominator needs an x minus 4, and it needs an x, and this will also be in common. So we need to multiply by x and x minus 4 on each term. Okay, and this reduces, giving us 9x. This reduces, and we can distribute the 2, so that's plus 2x minus 8. And the right side, that all reduces and just leaves negative 8. Now that we've cleared fractions, we can combine like terms on the left, giving us 11x minus 8 equals negative 8. We can move the 8 to the right, that is 11x equals 0. And then when we divide by the 11, 
0 divided by 11 is 0. Great. And now we check. So that would be 9 over 0 minus 4 plus 2 over 0. Uh-oh, right there. This x equals 0 is extraneous. Can you see what happened? Dividing by 0 is undefined. Even though this showed up as an answer, we have to throw it away. And since we only had one to begin with when we threw it away, we end up with no solution. So you do have to check for extraneous solutions. The very beginning, we've had some practice identifying the domain restrictions. x equals 4, x equals 0, 0, 4, 4 and 0. Those are the only two answers that you cannot end up with. And that's the only one we ended up with, so we throw it out. All right, let's see if that happens again. Example 4. And you now see the date and the time. Let's try that again. There we go. So again, factoring out any denominator so that we can see the LCD. Oops. Oh, let's see what happens when I reset. Oh, just that. Good. I see that we need a y plus 6 and a y minus 6 on each term. Y's are looking funny. Let's see, y plus 6 and y minus 6. It takes a moment to write those down, but it's worth it because we see something different reduces out of each one. That was really nice. It all reduces. This one. So we have some multiplication left over. This foils. That'll be y squared minus 6y plus y minus 5y minus 6. Then we have minus y, just minus y, that's nice. On the right side, foiling out, y squared plus 3y minus 18. All right, we can combine some like terms. On the left, we have the minus 5y and the y. That's y squared minus 6y minus 6. And on the right, it is all, oops, I put a, a 3 there. I'm looking ahead, sorry. y squared plus 3y minus 18. All right, so now when we move everything to the left, well, right there, we notice they all reduce. The y squareds are gone. This is not a quadratic equation. Now it's just linear. So for the linear equations, we want to move all the variables to the left and all the numbers to the right, leaving us negative 9y equals negative 12. Divide by negative 9, and we have y equals, take four, a 3 out, and the negatives cancel. That would be 4 thirds. Okay, now for extraneous, negative 6 is a problem, so is positive 6. So we note not negative 6 or positive 6, so not extraneous. It doesn't mean this is the right answer. Plug it in and actually verify it's the right answer. But at least you have to check to make sure that it's not extraneous, because if you answer an extraneous that's most likely going to be in a multiple choice problem and you will lose credit because you did you mark something that doesn't even exist for that problem okay let's double check make sure that's the right answer that's what it is okay perfect let's move on to the next example all right so we have example five Find all values of x for which f of x is the indicated value. So we have f of x equals 1. On this problem, we have f of x is 15x minus 6 over x. So we replace f of x with 15x minus 6 over x, and that equals 1. Now this is a rational equation. 
we know we can multiply by the common denominator of x on all the terms on both sides and clear the fractions. We now have 15x squared minus 6 equals x. Moving this all to the left, we have a quadratic equation. We'll be able to factor and hopefully find some answers. So 15x, I believe we'll go with 3x and 5x. And then let's see, if we do 2 and 3 this way, we will have 10x and 9x. And minus 10x and plus 9x will give us our minus x. And we have our minus 6. All right, so we end up with the factor 3x minus 2 could equal 0, which gives us 3x equal 2, which gives us x equals 2 thirds. We also have 5x plus 3 could equal 0. So that's 5x equals negative 3, or x equals negative 3 fifths. All right, so we have these two solutions. x cannot equal 0. That's the really only function or domain restriction. So we do not have an extraneous solution. Again, you can go to decimals or fraction button and verify that this, in fact, works. It's not too hard. So, for example, 2 thirds, 15 times 2 thirds minus 6 over 2 thirds. That's 10 minus, that'll be, that's a 3, it looks like a 5, that's 18 divided by 2 is 9, that equals 1. So at 2 thirds, f of x actually equals 1. Perfect. Then you can check negative 3 fifths as well. So these are our two solutions. These are all the x values for which f of x equals 1. All right, problem number six. This is the last of lesson. this lesson we're doing, and then we'll be done with this video. For the pair of functions f and g, find all values of x for which f of x equals g of x. All right, so f of x equals g of x. So let's just multiply by negative 18, x minus 6. Here we need parentheses, and those reduce, and those reduce. We have a little foiling here. That'll be x squared minus 3x minus 18. And here, that's just negative 18. Keep in mind, this is multiplication, not 1 minus 18. Now, the 18s reduce, so we have x squared minus 3x equals 0. And we can factor a greatest common factor out to get this factored, to see that x equals 0 and x equals 3. Now, if we look up at the original, x cannot equal 6. That's really the only domain issue. We didn't get one of those, so we have our two answers. And f of 0, is that really equal to g of 0? We plug in 0 into f, and we get 3 over negative 18. And we plug 0 into g, and we get 1 over negative 6. And you can see that those are equivalent. And same with 3. You can plug 3 in and verify. All right, that completes this lesson review.